Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming again. Um, before we, uh, I, I always like opening the meeting with the Mayor of Hoboken, Mayor Bala. Thank you. Good evening. I just want to thank uh, the Elysian Charter School and uh, the, its principal, Susan Grusen, for having us here today. Um, we are uh, here at a critical phase, uh, five years in the making. Um, I want to thank um, Frank and Dennis uh, from uh, the, the DP, uh, Alexis, um, our, our outside vendors, stakeholders, and uh, all of you for being here. You know, um, bef before I sort of uh, get started, uh, it's interesting, I, I gave a couple interviews uh, this week about an article that uh, came out that was based on a study that predicted that that predicted the top 10 cities in the United States that will be underground within the next 50 years due to coastal flooding, storm surges, and the effects of climate change. And Hoboken was ranked number two in the top 10 cities in the United States that this article predicted would be underground um, uh, because of the impacts of climate change. And you know, this is really what we're here about. And um, the, the article and the study did not take into account everything we're doing here tonight with Re Rebuild by Design. But that's really the whole purpose of Rebuild by Design, is to make sure that we are not one of those top 10 cities that is in that position in 50 years. So we're taking very proactive measures, uh, measures that have been uh, highlighted on a national level to make sure that we don't um, we don't fall into that cycle of destruction and rebuilding and destruction and rebuilding that we can make Hoboken resilient on a more permanent, long-lasting build basis. And um, we've done it through this innovative model that we're, we're going to go ahead and proceed through uh, with a very important meeting tonight. Tonight is spe specifically focused on design, co design Zone 2 Cove Park, which we're all very familiar with. It's just a bit behind me. And um, we had three concepts that were presented by the design team. Uh, from that process, we've narrowed it down to two concepts. One is the ridge concept, and the other is called the meadow concept. Um, what we'd like you to do, we'd like to do is get as much input as possible. Um, I've had a chance to review um, both concepts um, probably about three times now. Um, I find the, the, the meadow uh, option very attractive, uh, but at the same time, there are elements of the, the ridge concept that I think are worth strong consideration. Um, and you know, the, the final concept uh, might be a hybrid of uh, both, uh, maybe the best of both uh, options. But in order to reach that final design um, outcome, we need um, your input and um, the professionals are really here to listen to your input as much as possible. So I'll close it with that and um, just also mention that there, there will be a survey online. So if um, anybody that you know uh, could not make it tonight because it is a beautiful summer, summer or thereabouts, summer evening, spring evening, um, there is going to be an um, online survey that uh, you can take to offer your opinions as to both the Ridge and the Meadow concept. But um, again, thank you very much for being here on this night for this critical project, and I would hand it over to uh, Dennis. Thank you, Mayor Bala, and uh, thank you to the Legion School. This is an excellent space. We love coming here. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Dennis Reinick. I'm, the, uh, I'm the Bureau Chief of the Bureau of Climate Resilience, Design, and Engineering. We just changed our name this week, but I think it's, it just meets with what Mayor Bala was talking about, how we're gonna design for climate resilience. And uh, this, is a big part of that pro this is a big part of that process, and we're really proud of this project. Tonight is about reviewing and providing input on the park design. I know you can't wait to get back there, and I know you can't wait to hear from Eric, but just wanna point out again that while we're talking about the park features and we're talking about trees, plantings, and playground equipment, it's, um, the park is also a huge part of our, our flood strategy to keep the river back during extreme weather events. So you can see up in the, in the north in Weehawken, the water came through the cove. You know that. You lived here. Um, 
So the park is that integral protection. That's why you see that uh, high point in the center of the park that Eric's gonna walk you through. Um, and now I'd just like to give everybody, to, um, we're gonna have a, a longer public meeting in the fall about the project and all the other details. Tonight's about the park. But I just wanna give everybody just a brief update on where we are. Uh, the de design phase is continuing. It will continue throughout the year with AECOM in the lead. The design team is still working to uh, set some final resist alignments in some locations. We're having some tricky, you know, finding a utility, trying to move it around. Um, we're obtaining easements and we're overcoming some very complicated utility conflicts. Surprise, surprise, working in Hoboken, we have a utility conflict. But that's, um, they'll be overcome. We know how to overcome them. It's just gonna take time to resolve them. We plan to start construction next year and the first contract we're gonna let out in this um, first is gonna be a smaller contract. It's the stormwater sewer separation system. It's the gold areas in the north and the south. We'll be doing that first as a small test contract, get our feet wet, get, our, get it going. Then we're gonna let out a second contract f to build the pink in the north and the south. Um, that should, both of those contracts should be let next year. As I say every meeting, the project budget and schedule remain challenging. They're still a challenge. We will know more this fall, and uh, we'll talk about it in the pro uh, as we know more throughout the summer and we learn more this fall. The design efforts will continue, and you can help us by providing input on this park. This is a key element to the, to, to the program and our resist strategy. We need to get your input so we can get to one, one park. And um, I'm really proud of what AECOM and OMA have put together. I sense the pride in everybody that keeps coming to these meetings, seeing your comments reflected in what we're doing in the back. I see the same faces coming, keep coming, bring your friends. And with that, I'd like to bring up Eric Olson from AECOM to start the presentation for the evening. Thanks, Dennis. I'm actually going to grab one of these mics. I might move around a little bit. Um, so as Dennis mentioned, my name is Eric Olson. I'm the Landscape Architecture Urban Design Lead for this project. Um, so the agenda for this evening, uh, for anyone that's new in the room that hasn't been to a meeting before, we're going to go over a very brief technical review for the park area itself. Uh, and then we're going to talk about all of the feedback that we got as a part of the last round of Design Zone workshops that were actually held in this space back in February, um, and talk a little bit about how that input was helpful to the design team. Um, after that, which hopefully should be somewhat brief, um, we'll, we'll dive into talking about the fun stuff for this evening, which is the two part concepts that have been further developed um, from the last round of, of materials you may have seen in February. And then after we present those, we'll have a breakout with all the materials in the back of the room you've already seen. Um, our design team is here tonight to talk with you, discuss the designs, talk about how they've been developed, um, answer questions, etc. So um, with that, we'll get started. Um, just a brief project overview for anyone that's not in the room. This is a little bit of a repeat from what Dennis said, but this is our project area, Hoboken in the center there, Weehawken up in the north and Jersey City in the south. Um, as Dennis mentioned, we have the two breach points that were in the north and south of the project. That's the purpose and need, really, for this resist structure. Uh, and so the pink line, that resist structure, uh, ties off the low points from high point to high point to resist that storm surge in a, in a future event. So as Dennis mentioned, we're going to be talking about uh, Design Zone 2 tonight, which is up there in the green. Um, design Zone 2 is mostly uh, made up of Cove Park. So this is a zoom in of the northern portion of that project. You can see uh, the, the light purple and pink lines are the resist structure alignment in this area. And the green sort of uh, polygon, that is the Cove Park area. So that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. As Dennis mentioned, uh, when we were back here in February, we presented um, three different park concepts. Uh, they were the Blossom, the Meadow, and the Ridge. Uh, we got a lot of amazing feedback, really valuable input for the design team that's helped us move forward with two uh, concepts that we're going to talk about here tonight. Uh, and then we're taking some feedback tonight uh, as a part of uh, the pamphlets that were handed out. I'll talk a little bit about that. And then uh, there will also be a digital survey that's going to run through the 28th of this month, through June 28th. Um, there is a, a link to that digital survey in your pamphlet, so you can follow that web address and, and provide some additional uh, feedback that way. So all that feedback will help the design team move towards one preferred park concept uh, that we'll come back and talk about in the fall of this year. So just a brief 
review of some of the uh, technical components uh, of, the, of the park area. So as you may know, if you've been to meetings before, uh, the, within the Cove Park area, we have three components that make up the resist structure. The first and the main component is what we call this T-resist structure. Looks a little bit like an upside down T. Um, the second component is our deployable rolling floodgates. Uh, so those are shown here. They work kind of like a, a pocket door in your kitchen that slides in and out. Um, so those will close off the openings during a resist event, or excuse me, during a storm event, uh, where we have openings for vehicular traffic, et cetera, to get through the resist structure. And then the last component that's um, unique to Cove Park is the gate housing. Uh, and I'll describe that a little bit more, but you can think of it sort of as just like a little miniature uh, dollhouse, if you will, that the gate lives within. So this is um, a, a bird's eye view of the main portion of Cove Park. You can see Weehawken Cove down here in the bottom right. Uh, 15th Street along this side and Park Avenue up along the top. Um, so the, the gray line you see running through the center diagonally through the park area, that's the T-resist structure. So that's the main component of the resist uh, feature through the park. Uh, the next component are the deployable roller floodgates. So those are shown in yellow here. They'll be stored in the park. So whenever they're not in use, they'll be uh, stored within the park area. We have um, two openings within the resist structure. So the first you see is down here at 15th Street. That's to maintain vehicular and pedestrian access as it currently exists there. And the second opening is up near 16th Street and Park Avenue. That opening is there to provide emergency access for things like fire truck or uh, ambulance in the event that they would ever need to get from Park Avenue down to the waterfront in an emergency in the future. So then this diagram starts to show those uh, gate housings. Essentially what these do is cover the roller and gates when they're in their stored position. Um, the gates function by sliding out of those housings. They roll across tracks that are in the ground, kind of like a mini train track, um, and into position. So they'll close off those openings during an event. Um, and what this whole system of the resist structure, the deployable gates and the gate housings allows us to do in the park area is to think about a way to design and build a park that actually folds up and over the top of this spine that is the resist structure that runs through the middle of the park. So that you don't have something uh, separating you from one side of the park to the other, that this whole area that's shown in green here will feel like one park that has this spine of a resist structure through the middle of it. So that's a brief technical review. Uh, we'll talk about the public input that we received in the last round of workshops, so spe specifically um, regarding the park. So um, as I mentioned, we got a ton of great feedback in the last round of workshops. Um, highlighted in pink here, it was, a, a, again, a pamphlet-based uh, feedback that we received, uh, fit into a larger uh, series of, of input and feedback we received throughout the course of the project thus far. Um, we had over 220 different written comments uh, on all of the park concepts, over 760 features as being liked. Um, and then there was also an Allegiant School petition that was put together. So this is a, just a recap of what those concepts were, what they looked like the last time we met. Uh, this is the Blossom. Um, particular items that were popular in this concept were uh, a variety of planting and seeding options and also a, a variety of circulation routes. Um, but people generally seem to think that this option had too much hardscape, a little bit too much wasted space between the different park uses, and that it might require too much maintenance. The second concept is called the Meadow. Uh, you see a sort of a, a very large central meadow feature in this concept. That was a very popular feature. Um, a lot of green space with the waterfront lawn as well. Um, the Elysian School petition identified this as being a preferred option among the three, and this was also the option that received the most positive comments uh, in the written comments on all of the park concepts. The last concept was called the ridge. Um, Highlights here were that uh, people tended to, to, to think that this outlook moment within the ridge was quite cool. Um, and of all of the three concepts, the northern portion up here, this skinny piece, was probably the most preferred of all three. So when all of that feedback was uh, gathered and sort of uh, tabulated by our team, it became clear that the two concepts to move forward that we're going to talk about this evening were the ridge and the meadow. So um, this is what they looked like the last time we were here to speak with them, uh, to speak with you about them. Um, and we'll talk about the developments of these uh, this evening. Um, so even though th it was quite clear that those were the two preferred concepts of the three, there were also um, some emerging trends in the input that uh, were suggestions about how even those two part concepts could be made better. Um, and they sort of fit into six different categories. The first was that uh, all of the park concepts could think about cohesive pedestrian circulation a little bit better, a variety of ways to move through the park. 
uh, that visual impact was very important. What is this park going to look like? How is it going to imp impact my ability to see the waterfront and to experience the waterfront? Um, that activity, activities and active spaces, especially for younger people and kids, were very important, and that all of the park spaces, including those active spaces, wanted to feel very safe from this, the street edges, the busy Park Avenue and 15th Street. Um, and then finally, that more green, more lawn space, and, and more shade, um, that, that would be a good thing in any park concept. So this evening, um, hopefully all of you were handed a pamphlet when you walked in tonight. If you didn't get one, stop by the table when the presentation's over and you can grab one. Um, on the front and the back of that, there's sort of some general information, the stuff that's in the black. Um, on the front side, some overview stuff. On the very back, um, in the pink, you'll see the, um, the web address for the digital survey. And then also um, an aerial view of the two concepts we'll be talking about tonight. And then if you open the pamphlet all the way up, um, there's a small insert in there. That's to leave some written comments for us this evening. Uh, if you do have written comments you'd like to leave us, please write them down on there and leave them at the table before you leave tonight. Uh, and then you can also use this pamphlet as a way to follow along a little bit um, while we're giving the presentation this evening. So with that, we're going to jump into talking about uh, the park concepts that we have on display here tonight. Um, I'm going to bring Gonzalo Cruz up, who's the uh, principal of our landscape architecture urban design practice in New York City, to help me a little bit so you don't get too uh, sick of listening to me talk all, all night long. Um, but before I hand him off to him to talk a little bit about the meadow concept, um, I just want to remind people of a couple of things. The first is that uh, you remember in those diagrams early on that talked about the different components of the resist structure, that both park concepts tonight have the exact same resist structure as their core. The infrastructure there is exactly the same. The T-resist structure is in the same location. The gates and the gate housings are the same size and in the same location. So there's no difference between the concepts with that base infrastructure. Really, the only differences that we're talking about tonight is how does the park feel? How are the uses within the park organized? How can I experience this park? And how is my experience in this other park somewhat different? Um, I also want to mention that schedule, operations and maintenance, and costs are comparable between both of the park concepts we're going to be talking about tonight. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Gonzalo to talk a little bit about the meadow. Thanks, Eric. Um, I'm Gonzalo Cruz, and I lead this landscape architecture and urban design studio for AECOM here in New York. But before I get going, I mean, um, the reason why Eric asked me to share the floor with him tonight is because, you know, there's a lot of brains and people that are really committed to this project that have been working on it for a while, particularly our, 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 our lead designers. And I just want you guys to stand up and raise your hand so that people know who you are, uh, particularly uh, that's Danny. Uh, Ran, where are you? Ran right there, she's an amazing designer and she put her heart and her life into this process and we want to give her the right. And Lauren, standing right next to her, you know, like slaved every night and weekends to get us to where we need to be here tonight. So thank you guys. We wouldn't be here without your, your help. So with that, I want to talk a little bit about what we have going here. We're really excited about the two opportunities that we're bringing to you guys. We actually feel a little bit, you know, we're not going to tell you the one that we like the most because we come with preconceptions, but we feel super confident about the fact that whatever we decide to move forward with tonight or however we get feedback from you as we move along, this is going to be an exciting park regardless. It's going to be a beautiful park one way or another. So the first idea, um, it, we, we wrapped our heads around and called it the meadow. And, and we call it that because we want it to be the most naturalistic looking park possible. You know, through your uh, feedback, we've learned that you really want open areas, green areas. This is something that was very important to you. And every time we showed you ideas in the past, we always kept coming back to that very same and very simple idea of like having the naturalistic environment. So the meadow offers you a lot of that. So how the meadow is set up is actually quite simple. First, the resist structure is the most important thing about this project. We worked through very carefully how to actually open view sheds into the waterfront. And we make that a priority because we didn't want to completely block the waterfront. Then we draped a, a meadow, a green blanket, if you may, and then started to carve out zones for program opportunities. These zones, we then walked with you to actually program. But one of the most important features or more interesting features of, the, of this scheme is this flying walkway. So, this is a park that is very green. You have a lot of opportunities to engage with different components of program uses. You know, we have zones for uh, playground and, and children recreation of all ages. This is something that we also picked up from the past, from the past meeting. 
you know, how you want it to, to, you know, families need to be near each other. Sometimes there's a toddler in a family, sometimes there's a 12-year-old. And as parents, you want to have the flexibility to be connected to two zones, to have your, your children and your family united. So we are giving you that. This is a major update from when we were before. Um, the second thing that we wanted to uh, include is a large open green area, lawns. We, you wanted flexibility to do whatever you want in the park. It doesn't have to be hyper-programmed. So that big lawn area is, allows you to do that. But not only we're giving you that as an activated sort of lawn to, to throw ball and to play and do all those things, but facing the waterfront, we have a very large gathering space in the form of an amphitheater overlooking the harbor, which is this zone here. This is actually one of the most uh, beautiful moments or experiences that the Meadow concept has. Slide, it's gradually walking up into this um, elevated zone, which is basically what the line of protection or the risk reduction structure is tucked into. Um, we have these beautiful waterfront views. And throughout the entirety of the meadow, the whole thing is covered with green, with planting, with a lot of planting material, with a lot of native treatments in, in the way that we, you know, we heard you and wanted you to have. Uh, and before I forget, one of the most, the coolest features, I think, of the meadow is this this flying boardwalk or walkway. So that is the only feature that disengages for, from any particular kind of use. So if you just want to go into the park and enjoy yourself, it, take a look at the waterfront, or people watch, just watch people do what they do, you would engage in this flying walkway in which you will find places to sit, places of shading, places to just be with your significant others in, in, at ease, at, at very peacefully. So that's kind of the gist of this uh, meadow uh, concept. The objectives for both the designs have been very, very uh, taken into account very carefully and, and, and seriously. Cohesive circulation, this is something that we learned from you last time. You want to be able to get from one point to another very quickly, right? And if you also wanted to have a choice to engage with program, if you wanted to. So this is something that we worked out very carefully and I'll show you how it works. Visual impact was a important thing, you know, because we have this resist structure running through the park, that doesn't have to be an obstacle. We actually take that as an opportunity to engage you and elevate you so you can have even better views into the harbor and into uh, the city. Um, activation of kids' uses and, and playgrounds and things like that, we have plenty of that in both schemes. This is something that we learned. And we've classified the various uh, age groups that, uh, that would actually be used in the park. This was something that we talked in length about last time. Safety and street crossings. How, what are the relationships between the, the, the school versus the, the playgrounds? How are we gonna fence them? You know, the ability per, for parents and teachers to have access to both playgrounds for different age groups and stuff like that. We've addressed that and hopefully you agree with some of the uh, uh, ideas that we've put together. More green, I think I've, I've spoken in length about that. Shade. This is also something really important. You want to be able to work through the park and you want to be in shade, whether of an artificial nature, a canopy with like vines growing over it or, or trees, which is like the most beautiful way to shade a space. You wanted to have a lot of that and we've increased that by a substant uh, amount. And finally, another, the, the main objective is to, so that the park is resilient. It needs to be self-sustainable. It needs to serve its main purpose, which is to protect uh, you know, from surges and, and floodings and things of that nature. So we're moving forward with, uh, we're making sure that it meets its primary uh, objective. So I said, as I said, um, you have the play zones. We have a lot of planted buffer zones along the perimeters of the park that allow you to have a lot of shade. We have lawn for active uses. We have a dog park. Um, we kind of resized it to be a little bit smaller because we wanted you to have more lawn to play in. Um, we have the open lawn amphitheater. We have a series of small and very discreet uh, garden pockets. This is a just very intimate moments for you to just be uh, in, in at ease with the park. We have an entry plaza. We, we do see value in providing you with a platform to have uh, social gatherings, weekend activities, markets, things of that nature. So we've designated a zone for you to have that if you wanted to program it. And, and, and the pedestrian bridge and overlook, that's kind of like you know, one of the main features of the idea. And then the rest is kind of like a series of programs that kind of repeat as you move along the park. But in essence, again, um, in, 
in, I, I, want to, I want you to understand what the whole concept is. So like we're draping a meadow in and around the entirety of the park, which we're pretty excited about. Circulation, as I mentioned earlier, super cohesive. You have a choice. If you want to move through the park very quickly, you move around the perimeters of the park. It's like you're trying to get from point A to point B, and you're, you're going to have an experience. It's going to be a beautiful shaded walkway on both ends. You can move around the plaza perimeters. But if you choose to take it slow to actually experience the park as you move from one side into the other, you would then engage into the elevated walkway very slightly, very slowly, very, very, it's all about a, a park experience at that point. You're not just moving from point A to point B, but you're actually moving through a park in a, in a slow way, enjoying yourself. And around the perimeter, uh, the secondary means of circulation is you actually enter the pocket of programs into the meadow. So the perimeter into zones, perimeter into playgrounds and, and, and lawn uh, areas and things like that. So we feel the circulation meets, uh, works very nicely, gives you plenty of opportunities to make decisions. We want you to make decisions when you experience the park. Visual impact, as, as I mentioned earlier too, this is our main corridor. We did not want to block the view to the waterfront from the street, from the grid. So we're keeping that clear, which is why we're proposing that the slide gate sort of it gets tucked in between the open corridor. And also the, 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 core, the, the view of, of the elevated platform, that's like the main feature. So we want you to have that as like, almost like a destination for the community. Here's a quick view of what it would feel like if you get off the highway into the park. This is just the gateway view into, into uh, Cove Park from this scheme. It was very important for us to, when you're coming from the street as well, what do you get, what do you see? And so we wanted to have the most welcoming environment possible. So um, walking into the plaza, you have the option to engage with some of the program zones, the, the dog park in this particular uh, view. But at all points, it, at all times, you see the flying waterway running through the park, which is uh, right up here. And this is a little bit of what the experience of that uh, flying uh, walkway, it's all about. It's about being disengaged from the ground. It's about walking into a, a cloud of trees. The ability to be able to touch the tree canopy if you wish to. And then also to look into the harbor. I mean, these are amazing views and, and we, wanted you, we wanted to lift you up so you can take advantage of these views. The same thing with the, with the, with the flying walk, walkway. From the ground, we wanted to make sure that it was experienced almost as a sculptural treatment. You know, this is not a piece of bridge infrastructure like any other bridge infrastructure. We wanted to clad it with materials that can be of a reflective nature. What I mean by that is some sort of reflective type, you know, sort of chrome treatment. So that at all times, the, the, the structure is reflecting into itself. It's reflecting the context in which it's sitting. So, if you see, it's picking up a lot of the canopy and, and, and foliage and color that the natural treatments of the park provide on, you know, on, on its own. So we're really excited about that idea. It kind of disappears into the horizon, if you may. It's all reflected, it's very cool. And at night, we also wanted to create a destination, a very beautiful contemporary plaza with very minimal lighting treatments that can get people to come out and enjoy the park. Um, and here's our vision for doing that. In and around the plaza, there's a lot of seating and, and, and shading. You know, there's a lot of places for people to be in small groups if they, wish you, if they wish to, or like a little bit more of an intimate setting if you wanted to hang out with your girlfriend or boyfriend. Um, that's kind of the point of this plaza. Great, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, how we've organized some of the uses within the park itself. Um, so uh, as you can see in this diagram, what it's, we're highlighting here is uh, some of the more active uses, so that's playgrounds that Gonzalo mentioned, some of the, the grassy fields for play. Uh, you can see that all of those that are sort of in the orange color here are located on the western side of the park. That's on the landward side of the resist structure. So there's a couple of reasons for this. First, um, it allows us to maintain a lot of this waterfront area for those more passive park uses. But secondly, some of these programs and uses like playgrounds and the dog park are a little bit more of an intensive uh, monetary investment up front. And so those are some things that we want to prioritize as having behind the resist structure during an event so that they don't need to worry about bouncing back so quickly. Things like plantings and lawns, those are much more uh, capable of, of accepting storm surge events than 
for say, example, a playground would be. Um, what you can also notice here is that uh, the dog park, as Gonzalo mentioned, is located up here in the pink. And what the meadow starts to do in this concept is actually kind of starts to hug all of these different park uses, almost wrap some meadow arms around it. So what it's doing is it's uh, creating a beautiful context for all of these uses to be within. So you'll feel like you're playing in the playground amongst a meadow. You'll feel like you're in the dog park with your dog playing fetch amongst a meadow. Um, and then you'll also see these um, sort of green triangles along the edges here. Those are those planted buffers that we've started to um, ins ins insert between the streetscapes and the park uses to provide a little bit of that buffer between the busy streetscape and, and the, the uses in the park. So then the active uses are on the west side. That leaves much of the, of the eastern side of the park for those more passive uses. And that, those, that same idea of the meadow sort of hugging the different types of programs and rooms wraps up and over the top of that high point and down and spills onto the water side. So it's very green. Um, a lot of different, uh, the, the yellow areas are, are seating pockets, little intimate garden-like meadow rooms within the meadow to enjoy, perhaps read a book, sit with a friend, um, but also this amphitheater moment adjacent to the lawn space. Um, another thing that I want to highlight is that from the last version of the meadow to this version, we've increased the amount of green by 26%. We've also increased the amount of, of shaded seating quite a bit. Um, we've increased the lawn area by two and a half times as much as in the last version. So this concept has gotten a lot more green since the last version we showed you, which is really great. Um, so a few views to kind of describe a couple of these ideas. This view is looking um, north along Park Avenue. So this car is on Park Avenue. You can see that idea of the planted puffer here, providing some separation between the street and the park uses. Um, on the side over here, you can see a small portion of the playground and how that's sort of connected through to uh, an open lawn space. You kick a soccer ball, throw a frisbee uh, at recess there. Easy for parents to see or teachers to see back and forth if I've got some kids playing football and some kids on the jungle gym at the same time. And all of these different um, moments are sort of wrapped in this beautiful garden context. Uh, and then this view looks at the other side, the more passive side. We see that open waterfront lawn, great views across to the city, uh, to the waterfront, but yet with lots of shade, lots of trees, lots of natural shade, and lots of opportunities for informal seating on that amphitheater, but also perhaps for some, for some smaller flexible events. Maybe it's a place we gather to watch the fireworks on the 4th of July, again with lighting at night to make it inviting, et cetera. So on the, on the idea of shade, this is something that we talked about in length last time too. So we went for it. We included a lot of shade, particularly um, when it comes to moving through the park. You, there, there were very specific asks about moving through it very quickly and you wanted to be 100% in shade. And so we provided that along the perimeters. But about shade, you know, we also saw other opportunities. Other things were born out of the idea of shade. So you know, these, these canopies that we have imagined serve a number of purposes, right? We are, we, we believe in the power of, of, of seasonality, you know, like the natural plants are very natural and beautiful, but you can't just rely on their interest of trees at all times. So we believe that installing vine treatments along these trellises would provide that element of excitement throughout the year. They grow, they flower, sometimes they bloom very, with very bright and, and, and vivid colors. And we want you to have that experience from time to time in addition to all of the shading that comes with the tree uh, canopy. And, and with that too, uh, you know, we're responding very, uh, very explicit, explicitly to the power of the actual tree type. You know, we wanted to be na a native species that can vary in color throughout the season. So here's a view of that garden zone that we have in front of the waterfront in spring. Sorry, in fall. In fall. So, as, <laughs> it, so what w we wanted you to have, like, you know, sometimes we get really excited about going to the Palisades, and we have a lot of ideas about the Palisades in the next scheme, but you know, like the change of canopy, it's kind of an, uh, an interesting phenomena that we wanted you to experience in the park, and we wanted you to get like a bunch of that, a bunch of that experience into the park. Here's a summer view, summer spring view with a lot of ground cover, things that we expect to be, to, to take on their own, their own life. We want to select a lot of native species that required next to no maintenance. That was really important to us but also, you know, that can pick up a little bit of the salinity levels that the water brings, you know, that kind of like salty type of waterfront environment, planting types. 
So I think that's a good segue to talk a little bit about this resilience and sustainability uh, design objective that we have. So in addition to the resist structure, the rest of the park wants to function in a resilient, sustainable manner as well. And there's a couple of uh, ways that we've, we've been thinking about that. The first is, is about the planting palette itself. We're thinking about the plants that we're choosing here. Not only are they native plants, historically uh, representative of what could have been in the Hoboken area, but also plants that are drought tolerant, plants that can deal with um, salt during an event, plants that are extremely low maintenance, but also plants that provide a lot of habitat benefit for local birds, butterflies, et cetera. Um, and additionally, these plants uh, can do a lot for us from a stormwater perspective. Um, we want to think about strategies for uh, any stormwater that falls on the park site. Are there opportunities to capture some of that, perhaps store it in a cistern and reuse it for irrigation at a later date? Um, are there opportunities to filter that stormwater as it moves through the different uh, levels of the planting soil, et cetera? So um, that is a little, a brief diagram. I won't go into depth on it because it's a little small on the screen, but it's in the boards in the back. If you have some questions, you can ask us a little bit more about that. Um, so this is a view of the meadow um, in the summer. So you can see here that meadow as it slopes up to the top of that high point. This is that, uh, that, this is that flying bridge that comes down and lands on the top of the meadow. The waterfront lawn here and, and the amphitheater moment. So we're looking south. You know, we're somewhere sitting just up in here right now. Um, but you can see what it looks like in the summertime, a variety of those native plants that can do a lot for us. They can capture and store stormwater. They create a beautiful context to just enjoy the meadow. Um, and then they provide that great seasonality. We, get those golden and, and brownish hues in the fall um, with the leaves changing color as well. And then also into the winter, those native plantings can provide some, some pretty uh, interesting winter interest as well um, and provides a great park context with the waterfront lawn to have a snow, snowman building competition, snowball fight with your brother, whatever that may be. And if you stay, stay on that image for a second, um, the, 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 the thing with the trellis, the idea behind the trellis is is that when winter comes and all these plants die away, they, they remain as sculptures and they become an attractor to the park for you to come and take a look at them. I think that was one of the fundamental sort of ideas behind the trellises. We want a park that can be utilized all year round. Okay, cool. And so with that, we're gonna jump into the next idea. So kind of reset your brain a, a little bit for a second. Uh, we have the rich now, and the rich was born out of the idea of sort of taking the context and turning it into an opportunity. And by that I mean uh, the Palisades. Have you ever sort of, sort of admired what they look like? They're very sort of beautiful uh, you know, hills uh, with a lot of like native vegetation. A lot of natural treatments are exposed. And so we're thinking that in, the sim in similar fashion, we have the line of protection uh, or the, the resist structure we want to be able to ensure that we provide it with the same view sheds that we provide them with the meadow. But instead, we have this ridge running through the top of the, the elevation and then slowly es escalates down into the ground. And so that sentiment, that idea, is what we're picking up from the concept of, of the Palisades, right? You have this sort of very wooded area around this sort of walking ridge structure that you can slowly step down and almost hike in concept. So the way that it works, uh, the same uh, rationale for design principles, same priorities as uh, Eric mentioned earlier in the presentation, we're, we're really talking about different experiences within the park, but they offer pretty much the same thing in terms of program opportunity. But the way that the meadow works is, uh, I'm sorry, the ridge works is that this, we, we made a conscious decision about like, using that ridge and slowly program its way down. When you're coming right down into the, into the, from the ridge, there will be very flat zones of opportunities framing the park. So the ridge itself, as the Palisades, become the main attractor. And the attractor comes with a lot of design experiences. Similar to the one that we had for the meadow, we've, we're installing a, a smaller size amphitheater because we thought that it was just as critical to provide areas of elevated landscape, a, a lot of like terrace landscapes that come down from the, the Palisades, from the ridge. Think about it in concept, you know, like we're always looking into different zones of terracing coming from the high, high points of the, of the ridge. And as you move onto the backside, it kind of functions the exact same way. We have a series of planted terraces that kind of mimic that notion of the vegetated Palisade. And then we land into open areas that provide 
a lot of flexible use and long zones for playing and you know for throwing balls and for playing baseball and things of that nature but also zones that um, allow you to um, activate more active program like basketballs and like throwing balls and handball and things of that nature so in this in similar fashion from the previous scheme we wanted to provide uh, you know parents an opportunity to monitor uh, their families and be able to have them at all at, within view at all times and so there's another rhythm about you know having the playground which provide different age groups uh, an opportunity to enjoy the zone uh, next to you know places where we can have older kids kind of play balls and so play ball in that zone in the middle of these two um, playgrounds I guess it's more of a social space for parents to be or to you know a place to repose in between play uh, play activities um, one really cool thing about this idea is that we have an overlook we you know when you every time you go for a hike we thought about the idea so, okay, like, so you get up there and what is it that you aspire to do or to be, and you just get up there and just take a look at what you see in front of you and so that's where the idea of the overlook was born a play of this a place of destination a place where you can actually look into the to the to the harbor side into the water so cohesive circulation um, we wanted to provide you with the same similar with a similar way of circulating the park very very efficiently around its perimeter if you want to get from point a to point b just use the perimeter and you'll be fine but this one gets a little bit more intricate in terms of like making choices right when you enter the park you're actually encouraged to move through the park in a, in a much slower fashion. You move through landscape zones, as opposed to the previous scheme where you move from the perimeter directly into the program zone. So this one is kind of a little bit more naturalistic in form. Um, and it works kind of like that all around. Same thing about visual impact and, and, and visual oppor opportunity. I mentioned uh, the overlook. That's kind of also a main feature for the park. And we do not want to block views from the from the waterfront in some areas, which is why we've kept the entire plaza area free of obstacles, so you can always see the water from the other side. Very quickly, um, what you get into the gateway view, we call it the you know what's the first thing that you that you see when you enter is you see a, a zone of public gathering, you see an activated urban park, uh, and we we feel pretty excited about that because it's kind of a you know inviting people to be and to meet and to, to hang out. From the other side of the street, what you see immediately is basically that idea of the, of the ridge or the palisades. These are escalated, like terraced, planted natural areas, which is what you get to see from a high point into the ground. Again, very green, uh, but, but a little bit more structure, a little bit more, you know, almost in, in a way that you climb this, this, this wall very beautifully and visually. Through, through, the, uh, through the ridge, we also thought it would be a really good, a fun idea to conceptualize the idea of plant is growing onto the ridge, with, onto the ridge with, with, with something a little bit more artificial. You know, we have that element of you know, winter interest. That's what these things are. So when winter happens you know, in, the, in, the, in the summer, they can get planted, we can provide shade and color and they, they grow and they die. And in the winter, they become their own thing. They become an attractor into themselves for you to come and experience the park. Here is, here is a walk that I mentioned. Like It gets a little bit more nuanced and a little bit more exploratory along the harbor side. So if you want to move around the perimeter, you can do that very easily. Just straight shot along the waterfront. We have a waterfront esplanade. But if you decide to engage into the of, terraces of the, of the ridge, there's a lot of moments of, 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 of experience, there's a lot of experiences within that that provide areas for shade and seating. Again, another thing that we wanted to make sure was very different from the previous scheme is that all treatments that face the water on the rich uh, idea or on the rich concept are completely natural. Like, um, you know, we're, we're hoping that we can pull off like an entire series of deck treatments, like wooden treatments that make it look a lot more naturalistic than they actually are. And so this is very distinctive than what we had from the meadow scheme. And of course, a place of gathering at night. You know, we, we have learned 
um, in conversations with you that you want to be able to program the park at all times. This is not just a summer thing or a day thing. You want to be able to have opportunities to engage in maybe projections at night during the summer or during the fall or during the spring. And we think that the amphitheater and the Overlook combined provide you with this beautiful outdoor cinema or outdoor, uh, you know, theater. Um, so we're, we feel pretty excited about that as an idea. Great. Um, I'll run through some of this stuff a little quickly. Um, so uh, as Gonzalo mentioned, the, the overall organization of the program is very similar to what we saw in the meadow. Um, one thing that I will point out that's slightly different here is that um, you notice along the edges of 15th Street and Park Avenue, we have a little bit more of a traditional city sidewalk experience in this particular uh, concept. We still have that buffer between the sidewalk and the park programs. You see this, uh, this green buffer there, but the, the sidewalk experience itself is a little bit more traditional than what we see in the meadow. But we still have a lot of that um, active space uh, for, for recreation and, and kids there. And then the, uh, the, the, the side nearest to the cove, um, more green, more passive. Um, the purple is sort of that, that walkway experience that Gonzalo was describing, just highlighted with a, with a, a bright color here so you know what it is. And we see the amphitheater here in this little dark purple underneath that outlook moment. So here's a view of uh, within the play experience on the, on the west side of the, of the ridge concept. We see one sort of area uh, for, for one age group of kids in the foreground, so we're sort of standing in the middle of it here. There's more behind us. We see the, the field for kicking a soccer ball or playing football in the background there. And then just back here, you can see sort of a secondary play zone for a different age group of kids. But that as a parent or a teacher, I can hang out here in this sort of social seating element underneath some shade and be able to see everything that's going on. And then when we get to the, to the water side here, nearest the cove, again, we have that, that open waterfront lawn with the amphitheater seating, and we can see that outlook sort of moving uh, adjacent to us there. Um, so uh, again, the shade was very important. Uh, we thought a lot about the shade. We have a mix of natural shade from trees and also constructed shade elements that Gonzalo described in this concept as well. Um, we can see here this view is looking north towards Weehawken in the, in the sort of the skinny section of the park. Um, a lot of opportunities for plantings with trees. The existing trees that are already there along the waterfront um, provide shade and we have a, a variety of seating uh, opportunities here, whether it's linear seating such as seat walls or uh, some more movable seating within that plaza area. Uh, and then also a view from up on top of that ridge experience. So the outlook you see here is just uh, in the back of our view here. Um, so this is what it might feel to be like up on the top of that ridge experience. These plantings that have sort of uh, wrapped themselves up to the top of the ridge. And we have the opportunity to experience that beneath this, uh, this shade canopy structure shown here in spring flowering. Um, again, thinking about sustainability and resilience in a very similar way, uh, capitalizing on stormwater opportunities, um, thinking about drought tolerant plants, salt tolerant plants, low maintenance plants that provide a lot of habitat opportunities uh, for us here. And then this is a, a view of some of those, uh, those terraced plantings that Gonzalo was talking about. You see how we can think about opportunities to carve out small moments for intimate seeding amongst those planted areas. Um, lots of native plantings for, for local uh, birds and fauna. Um, and again, that that will change throughout the seasons. Seasonally, we'll get different visual interest. Also an opportunity with all of these native plantings um, and stormwater uh, strategies in both concepts, the meadow and the ridge, to think about resilient education opportunities. Are there curriculums that the school here can develop around stormwater or native plantings and that you can utilize that right across the street as a part of your curriculum? In both the meadow and the ridge, that's something that, that uh, is, is there to, to utilize. Um, and then again, a, a view in the winter. Uh, are there opportunities to uh, you know, build snowmen, bring your sled into the park, pull your brother behind you, have snowball fights, et cetera? So thinking about seasonality and both of the concepts in a very um, cohesive way. Um, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. It's just a little bit of a program comparison. Essentially, how much of each of these things do we have within each park concept? It's on that uh, board on the far left over there, um, so you can look at it in a little more depth if, you, if you'd like and ask us some questions about it. But this just kind of compares how much of each thing do we have within the concept. So you see some of the, 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 the uses like playground and dog park are pretty similar between the meadow and the ridge. But for example, in the meadow, we do have uh, a slightly more native resilient plantings. Uh, and actually, the ridge does have slightly more amphitheater area. Um, 
The elevated uh, sort of walkway areas is similar within each concept. Um, the ridge does have slightly more plaza area, a little bit more flexible use there. Uh, the meadow has just a touch more lawn, but they're almost exactly the same there. Uh, and then, then the meadow does have slightly more sort of shaded seating, but again, they both have ample amounts of, of shaded seating opportunities. So uh, if you have more questions about that or want to talk more in depth, just grab one of the, the design team afterwards. Um, so, so next steps. Um, as I mentioned, there's going to be there is a digital survey, should already be live. Um, the link for that should be on your pamphlet. I believe it's in pink. I don't have one in front of me. Um, so that's going to run through June 28th. Um, so that's three weeks. Get the word out to friends, family, neighbors. Have them get on there and take the survey as well. Um, Alexis has a, is kind of pointing to where it is on your uh, pamphlet there. Um, We'll be coming back again uh, in the fall to talk about how the input we've received has helped us move towards one final preferred concept. Um, so after this, we'll break out. We'll go to the back of the room. All of the designers here will have name tags on, feel free to grab and chat with any of us. I do want to mention that the models that we have here tonight will be on display at some point. They won't be on display tomorrow. Uh, we've got to find the right place to put them uh, and the right way to, to transport them there. But they will be on display um, so that you can send friends and family to take a look at them if you want to see those in particular. Yeah. Um, so uh, with that, these are some of the faces you'll see in the room tonight. Uh, there's a few more of us here as well. Anyone with a name tag, feel free to grab. Um, we'll be standing at the boards in the back, and I think I'll let Alexis wrap up. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to uh, add to what Eric said. Um, beyond tonight, um, other opportunities along with the survey, which will be up on our website. Uh, starting tomorrow. It is live right now, but it will be on our project website tomorrow. We will be posting this, these slides tomorrow as well. Um, so if people would like to review the presentation or if you'd like to send the link to people who weren't here tonight, please go ahead and do that. Um, you also notice we are videotaping this public meeting. Um, so that will also be posted to our website. That will take about a week to get up. Um, but anyone who wasn't able to be here can always watch the, the video of the presentation. Um, and then we are very proud of the models on the back, and we do plan to have them on display. Um, I, we got some good suggestions, perhaps, at the library. Um, so we'll be sending out an announcement once those are on display um, so that folks in the community can go see the models. And with that, I encourage you to go discuss, share your thoughts. Please, we have a great team of designers in the back, um, very knowledgeable about the project, so please speak with them.